Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talks at Google. I'm Kevin Valk, and today we're welcoming Miss Jane Lynch. Thank you. And Kate Flannery. You best know them as Sue Sylvester from Glee and Meredith from The Office, but right now they're teaming together and they're doing a big old tour for See Jane Sing around the country. Uh, they're going to be playing up at UC Davis uh, tomorrow night, and then they have a big line of shows the 16th through the 19th of August this month up at Joe's Pub in New York City. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. So tell me about the show. Well, it started out as uh, um, 54 Below, which is a cabaret space in New York, asked me uh, if I would like four nights to do my act, assuming I had one, and I said, well, I don't have an act, but... Um, I will put one together. So I challenged myself and I brought this one on board immediately. We've been singing together for probably decades, which is a yeah. kind of a shocking thing to hear. And, um, uh, uh, you know, I just started putting songs together and um, we ended up with about a 45 minute show. And we had so much fun and we had a three piece band. And so that's how I met who is now my manager, Stephen Greener. And that's now Deanna is my tour manager and everything just started falling together. And we have a five piece band, the Tony Guerrero Quintet. And they are freaking amazing, you guys. <laughs> they are masters. And then this other dude, Tim Davis, who was the vocal arranger on Glee, became a very good friend. And he joins us and we do these really tight three part harmonies. And wow, we're having a blast. Wow. So what's your favorite part of the show in terms of, is it the live audience? The live audience and anything I do with this one. Hey. <laughs> Did you guys I know was going to say from, the same thing. Yeah. You guys know each other from a long time ago because you grew yeah. up in Chicago. Uh-huh. It's not Chicago. You grew up in the East Coast, but you guys were... Came together at, at in Chicago. Theater. Theater. In, in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. And you were at Second City, but bef after me. After you, yes. Right. But I was Jane's understudy in the show that we were like Brady Bunch. Yes. But I played all the non-Brady roles, so we got to play together, but then I got to watch her, so it was like... <laughs> and you were great as project. Alice, too. You did I Alice. I did Alice for quite a while, she yeah. Was, she was fun. hilarious as well. And um, we all came out here at the same time, all, all of us Chicago people from the Annoyance Theater, like in the early 90s. And we started doing um, sketch comedy at what is now the UCB up on uh, uh, Tamarind there. Uh, what was it called? The Tamarind Theater? The Tamarind Theater, yeah, up on uh, Franklin. And, right. Yeah. And we, yeah. did, we would do these little, like, sketch comedy shows. And anytime uh, I wanted to do a song or Kate wanted to do a song, we'd grab each other and... And we, we've been singing together for, uh, we did uh, What a Pair, that um, That's right, Benefit, for, yeah, uh, for Benefit Breast Cancer. Breast Cancer, What a Pair. And they, uh, they have you sing duets. <laughs> and um, so she and I did a duet. In fact, we do the song we did, which Kate found, and we do it in our show, is uh, Far From the Home I Love. Are you familiar with that from Fiddler on the Roof? As it's kind of an aching ballad. Well, she found this terrific tell them about it. This it's like a Paris. bongo drum version uh, that these two sisters did on the Ed Sullivan Show back in the early '60s, and it's like it's the it's the most insane, fantastically musically interesting arrangement. It has nothing to voices. do with the content of the song. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Just, you know, aching for the home I love, but I love this man, and it's just like you know, you're, they're they're yeah. uh, you know shaking their tits basically. Right. <laughs> but that, they're the Barry sisters. It's uh, so true. And what's Yiddish funny is that I thought maybe one day I might get to lip sync to it in a drag bar in LA, <laughs> but we get to sing with a, with a live band and, yeah, and in front of other amazing. people. Like and the, the, the harmonies are awesome and it's a, just this great belty number that we, uh, in fact, it, it's it's kind of uh, physically taxing, the song, the, the breathing and everything, <laughs> that we, we almost pass out sometimes. It's so true, we, but it's We did it in Utah <laughs> and where the, uh, you know, the, the elevation is so high that Riddle. we literally had to be sucking the oxygen off stage. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> <laughs> but we stopped in the middle of it. We had to stop in the middle of it. Jesus Christ, this elevation. But, uh, uh, it's but the audience really is worth it. It's worth all the pain we go through. Exactly. Really, it's just, we just we love give it. and we give. Well, I was going to say, but what's so cool about CJ and Sing is that they're all really small, intimate venues, which is awesome because yeah. the audience really. Some have been huge. We've done yeah, yeah, yeah. some huge, but yeah. and and that's great too. But, but there's something about like we're doing it at Joe's Pub, and how many is it like two fifty or something? I think so. It's, it's like a small, supper yeah. club, and um, it's kind of old school. It's got the candle or the the um, the lamps on the tables, and you can order dinner and have drinks and. It's, it's, yeah, it's going to be really fun. So, growing up in Chicago, and you grew up, obviously, in an Irish family right. uh, with the name Flannery. Uh, so did Lynch, by the so way. So, yes. Lynch. Oh, did you know yes. Irish? Yes. Irish? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, was it, music a big influence in you guys' family growing up? Absolutely. Always present? Well, my dad had a bar, Flannery's Tavern, uh, and then I went on to play a drunk on TV. <laughs> <laughs> what a stretch. Uh, but, you know, we ha he had a jukebox, and um, if you didn't know a song, he'd say, you don't know that song. I remember him always, like, sort of, you know, challenging me to learn something. And I loved old music back then because that was, like, the way that we connected. But I feel like I feel like Jane's dad and my dad, they probably were they probably related. They each other. We're probably related because <laughs> yeah. uh, Ireland is so incestuous. Yeah, uh, so exactly. Sure. 
<laughs> no Absolutely. doubt, right? Grapes and pillages, and uh, there's no, there are no pure uh, Irish. Men. Yeah. yeah, but when you talk about Frank in uh -huh. the show, it's so great. We get to do some songs that you used to sing around your kitchen table, which I, I it's fantastic. Yeah. So when my dad came to see the show, he just plugged right in. Just oh, loved yeah, every it was so second great. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, her, her dad is yeah. just a gem, such a great yeah. guy. But yeah, a lot of the stuff that uh, that, that um, we're singing in the, uh, in the show came straight from the kitchen table. I used to sit around the kitchen table with my mom and my dad, and my parents were terrific harmonizers. My dad sounded like Bing Crosby. He had a beautiful kind of voice. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, my dad was a banker. My mom was a secretary. They weren't professionals. But, uh, you know, I went on to, to do it. You know, I, I yeah. loved it so much. Wow. And you, t you did a turn on Broadway. I did. And Annie as, as, as uh, Miss Hannigan. Miss Hannigan. And so what was that like going on to the big Broadway stage? Oh, it was great. You know, I hadn't been on stage, and I think the same for you two. I hadn't really done a play since I started doing television in the 90s. So that's a couple of decades. Uh, so I hadn't been on stage, and I didn't think I wanted to do stage anymore. It doesn't pay that much. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really, it's, you know, it's, when you look, it's really hard work. But, uh, you know, getting it up every night and, you know, eight <laughs> shows a, a week and, um, I, I loved it. I, I yeah. was reinfected with the bug, and um, I couldn't get enough of it. I, I did it for two months, and uh, it was such a joy. In fact, that's how uh, I met the people at 54 Below. I got into the Broadway community, as it were, and they just assumed I had an act. Wow. She was the best Miss Hannigan, I gotta tell you. She was <laughs> hilarious. She kind of reminded me of Lucy. You are so funny. Oh, thank such you. A, oh, my God, seriously. <laughs> my biggest fan. No, it's, I mean, come on. Like, Vice versa. Home run, like, every night. <laughs> Cell phones, annoying people in the audience, talking, whatever. <laughs> Selfies, you don't care. She's <laughs> such a pro. Uh, is, there, is there a little room for improv like that, interacting with the audience and kind of coming uh, no. and stuff? No, no not, not in that. That was, uh, I was too afraid to step outside of the bounds in that. You not know. Hannigan, but I mean C.J. and Singh. Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, what I love it to do, and, and I know Kate does this too, is I like to script every damn moment. <laughs> <laughs> I build a cage, but then I bounce around freely within the cage. I need to know that I've got that structure. Um, you look like my brother so much. <laughs> I am your brother. Oh my God! You owe me a lot of money. <laughs> we found out we're from the same part of the country, like you we're know, uh, from minutes from each other. And are you um, Irish? See, we're all we're ancestors. We're both from Chicago. Oh yeah, Irish. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Downers yeah. Grove is where he's from. That. Isn't that the hell of a name? Hell of a name. <laughs> I'm from Downers Grove. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But that our show is, is is extremely. I mean, I've got uh, even my hilarious patter that looks like it's off the top of my head. I've scripted <laughs> within an inch of its life. But then I do bounce around within that, right? And she's oh, always Lucy every city. Goosey. <laughs> yeah, nothing's the same twice for her. So and that keeps me alive and going. What is she going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> now was it fun to kind of get back into that because you guys were both on scripted shows for so long. Mm -hmm. And so was it fun to kind of get back? Well, I guess you had a little bit of improv in the office. Uh, and not so much. I mean, no. it's sometimes, but it, uh, again, Very that scripted. was a show that was way more scripted than you would have realized, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, 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 no, totally. I mean, and that's that's the fun of kind of use, getting to use these muscles. I mean, we, we both started out of Second City and, you know, I it, it was, that was, that was, like, I feel like we were there at such a golden time, mm -hmm. even though we had our own, you know, weird experiences within all that, like the people that we came up with, I mean, I think about the people that were there when we were there. It's like kind of Stephen Colbert to drop some names. Yeah, and Steve, Steve Carell, Nia Amy Dallas, Richter, Amy Samaras, Andy Tina Richter. Faye. Well, maybe uh, Tina. They're, 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 younger. they're younger. Yeah, yeah that was the the next generation back. But still, down. but yeah, yeah, and you didn't know. I mean, who mm -hmm. knew? Like the deadbeat. You know, you never know. Everybody, even the, you, you were know. about to call Stephen Colbert deadbeat. No. <laughs> He, On did the go, he did go through kind of a very meek period, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. So um, what has been some of your favorite moments just from the tour and doing this show together? Well, this one uh, makes everything, uh, you know, I, 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 we, we play off each other very well, but I just don't know what you're going to do a lot of the time. And, and that keeps me on my toes because I I, you know, I'm kind of a con just... control freak, but I love that you, the stuff you throw in, you, you just... Uh, and she knows I tell her all the time. I couldn't do this show without her. It's well, Jane so is very generous because I tell you, I mean, I I feel like I'm just there to just to to you know keep keep the ridiculous going. Yeah, and it's insane. And just kind of keep yeah. it an, an extra ball in the air. That's the thing. It's like 
you think you're just going to see this TV star who's going to, you know, ha enjoy herself, uh, maybe not more than you are, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Hostage situation. Yeah. We and, all know what those but are. Like, I love that Jane has, like, she stepped it up with an amazing band, mm -hmm. and then with Tim Davis, it just takes a whole, like, vocally, like, yeah. there's so much going on. And she could just phone it in, but she doesn't, you no, know. We have so much. Fun. You could email it in. People would <laughs> yeah. still enjoy it. But she, you know, Jane really works really hard, and it, it's like, I feel like, you know, you, you get your money's worth as well. <laughs> it is. It's so now, and now it's a little over an hour, which all the promoters are grateful because they were like, you got to add more <laughs> stuff. And I didn't want to add things just to add them. Yeah. You know, they say, you know, get, put do two or three more songs. And it's like, well, wait, I just can't do two or three more songs. I, yeah. I need to feel compelled to... Um, uh, put them in, and so now we're we're I've actually over an hour. If we did the whole show with Tim opening and the band yeah. doing their stuff, we're probably an hour twenty now, which I, the promoters are like, you know, they're very, <laughs> they're very happy with. Sell that. more drinks. Yeah, we have to sell more <laughs> drinks, and you know, people want to. I understand it. People want to uh, feel like they've had an, a complete experience when you out because the tickets aren't cheap. You know, we don't come cheap. And um, <laughs> not cheap. you want to feel like you know an hour show, and it's like what. So uh, you know we do, they do a little intermission depending on the uh, the venue. Sometimes they'll do an intermission, but you do want them to like we have this song, "The Party's Over," which means the show's over, and people are like, "What? They freak out. <laughs> what? We yeah. just sat down." <laughs> so we we we've certainly made it longer. But like I said, I didn't want to add things just to add them. Right, and less is more. Let's face it. And, right? Yes, and I've I been mean, I've been a student of less is more. Honest to God, my entire life, and I have sat through those shows where people where you lose interest in the person. In fact, you get angry at them. <laughs> it's like if you do one more song. <laughs> Dedicated to your inner child, I'm gonna <laughs> throw something. <at> you. <laughs> well, it must be fun also to bring Tim Davis out from just arranging stuff and actually coming. Yeah, in well, and these two, and I would say I have a pretty good ear too. Uh, Tim mm -hmm. and Kate and uh, I, I have do these really tight, crazy tight, three-part harmonies, and you guys have. And then they back me up sometimes. With, I don't even know that they're gonna do it. Like when I'm doing a song by myself, and I hear them doing the ooze and the bat. Oh. And you just pick, they pick them We're up oozing. so fast. We're just oozing. Oozing, oozing loves. <laughs> and la sometimes. And <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, that's what's great about it. And Tim indeed is a vocal arranger, but she holds her own. You know, she she can pick her up, figure out her part like that. And I'm I usually don't sing too. without a wig on, though, just so you know. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, it is great having Tim. And Tim is a wonderful crooner, and he's, he's got a great sense of humor. He's a goof. Um, and he's a very handsome guy, and he comes out in, in his tuxedo and sings uh, with the band before we start, which is kind of nice. And the, the band itself, they're really entertaining guys, and they have their own special thing that they do, and they're very funny. And they have sort of an early 60s vibe, mm -hmm. so they're very well-dressed, but Skinny they really swing it, baby. They swing it, man. They sw you know. Yeah, and they say yeah. things like, that's bitchin', man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what was the, the evolution of that in terms of coming up with like the idea to like take it into that era and like do that? It, it all happened na uh, naturally and organically, which is the best way for these types of yeah. things to happen. Uh, t Tim introduced me. I said I wanted a three-piece band in L.A. because it was out in uh, New York. I had my three-piece band originally, and um, so I said I need a band out here. He said, well, I have a five-piece, and I was like, well, can I use three? <laughs> and he said, listen, <laughs> just listen to them. And these guys are amazing, and it just, the, our first rehearsal. Just, I went, okay, we're taking all five this guys. Yeah. It was so interesting. Every time we do a show, I feel like we we like each other more and more. Mm -hmm. Like, we actually watch earlier and earlier. Like, sometimes, you know, you don't walk on until you're about to perform, so you don't, like, listen to other people. I mean, some people do. Selfish actors. Yeah, right. Selfish yeah. Not us, of course. Not us. But, yeah. but it's, like, but it's us because we actually, like, enjoy it, like, more and more. I feel like, uh, which is amazing. Usually yeah. it's the opposite. You like people less and less when you tour with them. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of like, I should I said it out loud, so now I've jinxed it. So now yeah, we're right, going to go on the back slide. But that's all right. <laughs> but we do early, or earlier and early, or later, sorry, it's later and later in the uh, opening act, he, she and I are out there now. We're, we're, what is the earlier? We watch the whole thing now, I guess. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Space and time yeah. is screwing me up right now. Yeah. But yeah, we, we go out and watch them, uh, watch the whole thing, and it's, it's so fun. But we also, um, we don't tour, we don't do a lot of dates. We're not out for months at a time, and I think that's when the hate brews. Is when it's <laughs> day after right. day, night after night. Now we're, right. we see each other, we meet at the airport, and we're like, yay, it's so great to see you. And yeah, it's great. a nice thing, and rare so thing. You guys have talked about uh, your, you know, sitting around the dinner table and coming up with the, having these songs with your family. So what were some of your influences coming up, and what were some of those songs mm -hmm. growing up? Um, well, I, 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 well, the Irish thing, like Bing Crosby, of course. I mean, yep. it all, just also like the, that was early '60s um, songs that my parents hooked up. You know, like um, songs from My Fair Lady and mm -hmm. Camp. Like the, all, I remember always like singing, doing the dishes. The that was like, with, yeah, the show tunes thing. Mm -hmm. You know, but like sort of the, you know, the very specific 
you know, I, I don't know. And I think that there's, of course, like Frank Sinatra, like there's, there's, a, there's something, um, there's like a zeitgeist that we're hitting in a mm -hmm. way, but it's, it's much more eclectic than just that, though, because yes. there's songs from Mighty Wind that we mm -hmm. do too. Anyway. Yeah. But, so we have, uh, at one point I, I noticed that except for the Mighty Wind stuff, we weren't seeing anything that was written past 1960. Mm -hmm. And then, I just, are you familiar with Flying Machine, that group from the 60s? Uh, they sang, uh, sang that song, they're a one hit wonder. Smile a little smile for me, Rosemary. <laughs> we added that, well, you, if you come to the show you'll hear it. It's a sweet little pop song. Um, but uh, you know, most of the stuff is of that zeitgeist of the like the 50, 60s and fifties, and even back to the forties. And we do a song from you know Coney Island is from like the nineteen twenties. Right, so right, right. Song. Yeah. Um, but we just add, um, added a, a Nicki Minaj uh, yeah. Anaconda <laughs> <laughs> for the kids. For the kids. And um, I was going to ask. She's if a we knocked it out of the freaking park. Yeah. yeah. Um, she kills it. That's a hard thing to. Holy crap! There's oh, I do oh. most of the rap, but she we does. do we do it in, th with, in a beautiful. We do the chorus in a beautiful three-part harmony. That We're is, that is so just, white. And oh even the band God. is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty great. And then to see them like dancing, trying to, we're so white. We are <laughs> so white and we're so never going like, to change. doing the street thing as best we can. Yeah. So it's, it's fun to watch. <laughs> so is that where the ideas come from? It's just from all three of you guys just spitting on stuff? And yeah, stuff yeah, and yeah. Like that. Absolutely. And so it yeah. throughout the whole time. Right, like, oh, this tickles me. Let's do that. Our, the newest thing we're doing that we're going to premiere at, um, we're doing uh, University of California Davis over the weekend. And I think you're going to come, which mm -hmm. will be great. And no um, pressure. we will be premiering our uh, songs that made us cry as children medley. <laughs> we were we were in the bus and we were uh, the, uh, the van. We were talking about um, I, I was talking about how it would puff the magic dragon when I was a kid. <laughs> it used to make me weep. The part about Jackie Paper came no more and oh, it, it just broke my heart. I, I had a little phonograph and I would play it over and over again and I would be beside myself. And everybody started piping up the songs that made them cry. Tuvalu Ralura, which is an Irish lullaby. <laughs> um, uh, for Tony, it was uh, Seasons in the Sun. Goodbye, Papa. Please pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? And uh, Ben, J Michael Jackson's Ben, he ain't heavy, he's my brother. You're going to be like on the floor spiraling into despair <laughs> yes. at the end of this medley. So we're, we'll be premiering that. We will affect you. Yes. Cool. So do you guys have it any, will affect you. Do you guys have any funny stories just from the tour? Because live theater, everything's live, so there's mistakes and there's little goops and stuff yeah. like that. Not really. I, I know that everybody wants to hear, oh, one time. <laughs> uh, the drums <laughs> fell off the stand. Uh, and we were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we don't really have those things, thank God. Not yet. I just jinxed yeah. it for the yeah. moment. Yeah. <laughs> the drums are now going to fall <laughs> off the terrible. platform. Yeah. Um, you guys can start lining up the mic, too. We're going to start taking questions. Um, so what is something that you guys just haven't done before? Like, so you've done live theater. You guys have done TV. You've done improv. Is there anything that you guys haven't done before after the... That you want, want to. Yeah. Porn? You want to porn? Porn. I've not done porn. <laughs> porn. I think Meredith, I think your character on The Office, I think was doing... the next logical <laughs> step. NBC, though, know, very blurred. Yeah. I, my parents went through a lot <laughs> with that. Out. But it was yeah. very blurred out. Blurred out. It would have been porn. a lot. Now, granted, the cameraman never looked at me at lunch when we shot any of those scenes. <laughs> <laughs> never looked at me in the eye. No eye contact. But yeah, it could yeah. have been much worse. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I don't. I don't have goals anymore. I just don't. I just. I. Uh, I, I found that they're a waste of energy, and what rolls in at my feet is usually, you know, or the, the you know, like 54 below is saying, "Come do a cabaret, old chum." And I said, "Yeah, okay, let's yeah. do that." So I, I enjoy that kind of a thing, and then things happen. Um, organically and, and uh, I'm not running around like a chicken with its head cut off like what's next what's next <laughs> and do you guys have a favorite say that you guys have done as New York because I mean it's uh, New York population is, is I mean New York's okay. there. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. It's, not, it's no LA <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but what was really fun we just, <laughs> exactly we just did Beverly Hills uh, the right. which a great theater the Annenberg it's a new space kind of a new space yeah five years yeah old. what a great space too and so all of our friends got to come some of our family and the band uh, most of them are from Orange County so their wives and kids all came out, and that was great. And Dick Van Dyke sat Dick in the Van front row Dyke's and row. stood up, and oh my god, yeah. I, thought, I was so nervous. Yeah, that, that was that, that was so nervous. nervous. Yeah, I wish we had that. The reason I have smile, a smile, a uh, little smile for me, Rosemary, is because when I used to watch the Dick Van Dyke show, Rosemary, uh, the actress. Um, used to break my heart because she didn't have a boyfriend. <laughs> well, Herman Glipscher, but he couldn't commit. So um, I thought that song, Rosemary, was for her, for her character. <laughs> so I wish that I had had that when Dick Van Dyke was I'm sorry. Singing. He still loved it. I'm I am, sorry. yeah, he was. Well, while we're in that era, I kind of want to talk about, because you sang with Carol Barnett on yes. Lee. And did you guys do that on tour, too? Did she come? No. No, no, no. Okay. No, we didn't but do you guys, uh, I mean, that was, how, how incredible was that? Yeah, pretty, pretty outrageous and pretty much um, one of those things where you go, am I? 
and my, this is really happening. You sing the trolley song from Meet Me. Yeah, we sang the trolley song from Meet, uh, Meet Me in St. Louis. We also sang the Ohio song yeah. from uh, Wonderful Town. Wasn't it wonderful? Yeah. Thing? Yeah. And she chose them because when she was on the show, Ryan always said, he gave her kind of a, a what would you like to sing? What yeah. era would you like to sing? And then she got to you know make the final choice. So yeah, it was really great. It was a lot of fun. She's um, a, a great human being. And I, I grew up watching her show. And um, she inspired me. I knew that uh, I, I didn't know I wanted to do sketch comedy so much, but I knew that that kind of fun that she was having, that kind of creative fun, was what I wanted to do with my life. Because they always looked like they were having a blast. Yeah. And I have it from her that they were indeed having a blast. And what I loved about Carol Burnett was it was the Carol Burnett show, but it was also the Harvey Corman show and the, you know, the Lyle Wagner show and the Tim Conway show and the Vicki Lawrence show. They all got to shine. It wasn't just about her. You know, she was a member of the ensemble, just to say, where I love that. Right, which also, you know, I mean, that's the great thing about, I mean, I, the big surprise about Jane's show is that she actually shares a stage. I mean, it's, I, I feel like that's the most generous thing you can do. I, I, I don't know. I, and I, I don't want to be out anywhere alone. I don't, I don't ever <laughs> want to perform alone. I have no desire, no, no desire, no desire to just like stand the there and go, now here's a story from my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you guys for coming so much. Um, my question is that you both were on shows that have kind of become these, you know, cultural icons and cultural phenomenons, Scalia and The Office. I'm wondering if you can talk about kind of one, what your last day on set with that, with those great ensembles was like, and then also if there was a moment working with the cast when you felt like this is really something special, this is different than my usual work. Yeah, well, I will go first, and because I know you have stories too. But my, uh, we just we just ended, and um, we one of our last days. It was almost the last day. It was like third to last day. We did a song, uh, "I Lived." That song, "I Lived," where everybody was invited. Any guest, anybody who had guessed it on our show was invited to be in, and tons of them came, and it was so emotional and so. And it was also the uh, uh, dedicating the auditorium to Corey Monteith's character, which was very moving and. Very, very sad, and yet very uplifting all at the same time. So that was my my big memory, the big emotional um, occurrence. Um, and I remember the pilot, shooting the pilot when the kids were singing "Don't Stop Believe," "Don't Stop Believing." They were just wearing red T-shirts. They weren't. There was no production values. They were on an empty stage. Um, and I remember my character watches it, like kind of scowling over at them. And I thought, Oh my God, this is so. This is going to be a big hit. This is it, it, if it's not a big hit, it's going to be a small hit with somebody. You know, there'll be a small group of people um, that will love it. But it was so moving and so raw, and so beautiful. And so that that's my Glee story. Um, I, my, I have to tell you, I was still waiting tables when I got the job on the office. So my life completely changed. I'm, I'm kind of a late bloomer. I've always been working, but couldn't. I didn't quite. I, I'm too picky, and I feel like I was. I didn't latch on to the right thing yet. So when I got the office, I didn't know what it was going to be, and uh, initially I was, um, we were, it, uh, there were like six of us that were considered guest stars until the second season, then they finally made us uh, regulars, even though we were in every episode. So I feel like, and we were doing Booze Cruise, we were shooting the Booze Cruise episode, and I just remember feeling like, oh my God, like, this is really happening, this is really happening, and um, that was the same year we were uh, first nominated for an Emmy, and we won, and I, I, I just feel like my experience like I even if I didn't talk for like two weeks on that show like I knew I was in something incredibly special and smart and I I always felt like everyone especially the first few years and Steve Carell in particular he was never it was never about him even though he had he carried most of it he had most of the lines he never made it about him he always made it about the work and the ensemble and I felt like even getting the camera to have a look had so much power. So I knew like, it, I didn't have to count my lines, I didn't have to judge any of that, I just trusted that everything was gonna get revealed the way it should. And I'm so happy that that was actually the case. And I, I, I was so happy to be the person that got to do physical comedy and I kinda had my own thing and less was kinda more but in a great way. I never felt like I outwore my welcome. I felt like people were really rooting for me. So I just had an amazing experience for nine seasons and I, I, I feel like, no matter what happens, if I'm only known as a drunken floozy from that show, I'm happy. <laughs> so, not bad. Not yeah, bad. not too shabby. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. 
Um, so you guys spoke about having a break between when you were last on stage and when you return to the stage. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what you've seen in terms of differences in the, the audience. You mentioned selfies, you mentioned photos. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's sort of, I guess you missed sort of the beginning of the big technology sort of right. blast. So I'm curious what you've seen and also how that's impacted you as a performer and how you deal with that. It hasn't, you know, because when I went back to Broadway, or back to Broadway, it was, I actually, it was my Broadway uh, debut, uh, debut uh, but it was me going back to theater. Um, the audience has changed because the, on Broadway it's a lot of tourists. And there, it didn't change the way any of us performed, but I, I noticed that nobody's dressing up to go to the theater anymore. There's a lot of cargo <laughs> shorts and fanny packs. A lot of this. And, um, yeah. yeah. And, um, but, you know, it's, it's okay. Um, uh, there's, uh, uh, and I think this always happened, I didn't, at least in the last 10 or 15 years, if there's a star on Broadway, there's always a line of people when you, at the stage door who want photographs and, and um, autographs. And um, eh, that certainly wasn't the case when, you know, I, the last time I did theater. And there's a lot more uh, electronic media, the, like Broadway.com does a whole electronic media thing. So, it, it, but it really has an effect, it ha did not affect at all the way I perform or my experience on stage. Um, it, it was just a joy to go back, but things definitely have changed. I just remember, actually, Jane and I did the same play in New York, but at different times. So it was Nora Ephron's play, oh, right. Love, Loss, and What I Wore. And I, I did it, I think, five years ago. I think I did it like a year after you did. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember someone's phone rang in the audience, and they actually took the call. Yeah. And they were talking. No. And the audience wanted to kill them. <laughs> I said something. I, I said I had some killer snappy I'm comeback. Sure yeah. 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 Waka. yeah, but I I still felt like I couldn't stop what was happening and then but I felt like the audience sort of shut it down. So I I've, I've kind of never seen that before. There, <laughs> that's kind of been like that was like the major like what is happening? Uh -huh. There is sort of an unconscious thing that happens with live uh, shows, but I think that that's, you know, that's part of we're all sort of negotiating this new technology and there is no protocol. There sh there should be, but there's yeah. not. Like People used to have to go to a telephone booth before, and now there's no booth. So they, they you know, they, you're, you know, it's. It, but I think that um, unfortunately, you know, theater's really expensive, but it doesn't keep out the people that are unconscious. You know, they have money too. Yeah, I've seen people get up to go to the bathroom like they're at a movie theater, <laughs> and I would just never think about it. I wouldn't do that because you're when you get up, there are live people up there who are focusing on something, and you're like, excuse me. <laughs> And then they come back and they waddle back down the aisle. And yeah, they don't wait for like a break in the, or like, you know, there's not, they shouldn't no let them back in too, I think. You should, you should, have, to, you should have to wait, because there's monitors in the lobby. For the, most of the theaters, you can watch the play from a monitor in the lobby if you want. But So has that been fun for you guys, because with social media, with Instagram and Twitter and, mm -hmm. and everything and Facebook, like going out and like touching your fans, being able to engage with them, has that been pretty it's cool? It's kind of horrifying. <laughs> you should say that. You have to be it careful. It is. It's a little horrifying, yeah. because yeah. there's a sense of, like I have to be a little more self-conscious than I normally would be, and I just have to sort of figure out like, okay, what, what am I, you know, who, who needs to know what, like, mm -hmm. you know, and also like, who gives a flying shit? Like, I, I just feel like sometimes there's, I remember having to do like a celebrity blog for the office, like I had, I did the office blog for tvguide.com and I thought, someone did it before me who was like, we all had raisins today. Like they were saying like the dumbest things. <laughs> and I felt like I needed to have a point of view. So I was like, you know, who's the drunk in the corner watching everybody. So I just, but for me, I just feel like sometimes there's such an egocentric thing that happens with the sense of celebrity, even at the smallest level. But I think it's, we're all sort of like negotiating your, your ability to stick around people's, uh, uh, you know, it's like, uh, you can't, I don't know, I just think it's a really slippery slope. Yeah. And, but people are great, and I, I, do love, I do love the fans, I do the Twitter, I do it all, but it is like, oh my God, I mean, if, I, if somebody had told me this like years ago that this was what was gonna evolve, to, I mean, you know, I don't know, I don't know if I would've signed up exactly from <laughs> 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 I mean, Jane gets, Jane gets stopped, you get stopped way more than I do, and you handle it so no, well. No, I don't. Not, yeah, not, you not do. these days. I can be really rude these days. You've seen it, but yeah. yeah but, I, but sometimes I, I, there's enough is enough, if it's though. A child, I'll be nice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but if it's an adult acting like but a child, but even they're pushing it at this point. <laughs> the kids. Yeah. Well, no, there is an yeah, expectation, though. That's I, I, the yes, problem. Yes, there is an expectation of it's. It's almost like um, you're a prize. It's. It's. You're this. The thing they're going to put on their shelf. 
And I, I don't like that. That you know, you know, like I'll be walking down the street and someone just comes right up to me and goes, Ch -ch -ch, in my face. Oh, <laughs> Not even like, hey. I mean, first of yeah. all, I wouldn't want to talk to you anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> nice to you anyway. But um, yeah, it's just this trying to get a prize. And this isn't at all what you asked, is it? <laughs> no, that was my that was yes, my follow-up question. I think it's absolutely related because I actually saw a production of Pasadena Playhouse with um, Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, and he walked on stage, and everybody burst into applause in the middle of the scene. Yeah, and interrupted <laughs> the play. They had that to happens on Broadway applause. too. That is kind of a a, a, a a tradition, actually. When the star comes out, uh, you know, they used to do it with Lunt and Fontaine. You know, they come on, everybody would applaud him. But now it's become kind of like you were in a movie. <laughs> <Woo -hoo>! <laughs> <Matrix>! <laughs> yeah, that is, and it does. It does take away from it. Yeah, yeah it does. No, I, 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 that's one of the things that I don't, I don't like. But it's been around for a long time. I don't know if that makes it better because it's been around for a long time. But, but I think the alternative is, I mean, you guys have this show that's going around the country, and you're able to actually engage people and be like, yeah. hey, I'm going to be in your town. Yeah, you know, being. It's kind of cool. Like, actually, it, yeah. it is kind of great. Although sometimes it feels like this is your life because there's somebody that will show up that I was like, oh, my old roommate from 15 years ago that I've lost touch with, probably for a good reason. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> you never, you know, it's like it's it's yeah. funky, but it's all, but it's also fantastic. Yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. in a good way. Very cool. Mm -hmm. More questions about how hard it is to discover. <laughs> how much they hate this generation. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks to both of you for coming here to come speak with us today. Um, I was just wondering, um, what's it like when you, you know, for either of you, when you run into Second City alums, you know, like you're doing a show or a movie. Like, for example, I know both of you have worked with Steve Carell mm -hmm. on things, you know, 40, uh, 40 year old virgin and The Office. So hoping you could speak a little on that. It's, you know, it's wonderful because we have a shared history, um, you know, that we, they were definitely the salad days for us. But they were really creative times. You know, Chicago is a really wonderful place to start your, your uh, artistic career. It's full of people who are self-starters who are doing it because they love it. And it attracts people from all over the world, really, who really kind of want to start their own theater company and um, want to work on stage and, and love it for the art of it. And um, so it's kind of nice to run into somebody like, hey, remember back then? And uh, the wardrobe person on Glee used to say, I can always tell a Chicago actor they hang up their clothes. <laughs> Because we hang up our clothes because we're going to have to wear them the next day and there's nobody cleaning them for us. Um, but there's just, yeah, kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of artistic centric. And, and so when you run into each other, it's almost like a relief. Like, oh, you know, there's somebody who I used to make funny with and we used to go out drinking and have parties. And so it's kind of nice to, <laughs> to connect. It is great. And the other thing I was going to say, the whole award show phenomenon, that is so fantastic because there's people that I would see from Second City that I'd only see at the Emmys or at the Golden Globes and it'd be like, oh my God, you know, it's like such a weird, it's like we're on this weird planet yeah. that, you know, we're so lucky to get to, you know, whether we win or not, it doesn't even matter. It's like we're at this crazy party. Uh, and Tony Bennett is singing five feet in front of us for no reason. Um, so yeah, you know, it's this weird thing, but it's 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 a nice validation for all the weird, you know, just you know all the all the the growing and the stumbling and all that stuff. It's like it's just so nice to uh, to get to enjoy those moments and to realize like it doesn't matter what you get. You know, just just being there is really the prize. Thanks. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, so I wanted to say, first of all, thank you for all the work you do for PETA oh, and sure. animal protection. And yeah. That, that's very worthy. Yeah. Um, are you going to miss Glee? And what part of it do you think you'll miss the most, if you miss it? Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, we did it in the Paramount lot, and I have a new TV show now on CBS that I start shooting soon called Angel from Hell, and we're shooting on Paramount lot. And we're not on the Glee stages, but our production offices are the Glee production offices, so it's kind of funny to be back there. Just a different show and different faces. Um, uh, you know, I became close with Matt Morrison and Darren Chris, and they're both on Broadway now, and I got to see them. And so th there's a part of it that's like, yeah, it's, it's, it was done, and I have the friends, you know, the people who popped for me are still around. So Dot Marie Jones and... Yeah, I still see these people, which is great. Chris Colfer lives on, in you know two blocks from me, so I see him all the time. 
Are you going to record this particular show at all or do some form of recording? Um, yes, I think we did one. We recorded the one in Maryville, Indiana, which was great because it was all of our our, our peeps because uh, uh, it's about 20 minutes from Chicago. Yeah, a lot of your um, high school friends were there, right? Yeah. The, yeah. yeah, I think we're, you know what, I think we might be, Joe's Pub, we might, I, yeah. I, hopefully it'll be something. I think we might actually do a production where we, you know, do it on purpose and maybe have a live feed and an album from it. They're kind of talking about that sort of thing, but nothing's for sure yet. Thank you. But there's nothing better than coming to the theater. Yeah, <laughs> it is. If I were going to be around, absolutely. I Cheap love it. Promotion. We're Sorry. going to be in Long Beach for all of you um, out here if you want to take a look. October at 3rd. October 3rd. Yeah. Um, which will be a great show. Go to Jane Lynch Official for all the dates. Yes, I think it's at the Carpenter out. Center. The Carpenter Center, yes. yes. Uh, like Richard Jesus. and uh, Karen Carpenter. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I, was, I went to Jesus. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. And they are like Jesus. The most and, famous yes. Carpenter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Next to Harrison Ford, who you know was a Carpenter. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Well, you both are phenomenal singers, and I, I didn't realize actually you sang until this, this whole thing kind of came along. And so when you guys weren't on doing this show and kind of, were, was there kind of coming back into practice with all this? And Well, and I actually have a comedy lounge act that I, so I've been singing for 15 years just doing that. The but but it's, we call the Lampshades. We're like a dying lounge act. We do mashups of 70s and 80s songs. Right. But my partner in Lampshades, Scott Robinson, does not sing harmony. So we, we the reason why we do mashups is because he can't, we, we can only sing two songs at the same time. That's like our trick. <laughs> That's it's great. Like our, our our weakness became our strength. Uh -huh. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but it's it. But that feels different because it's like it's it's a character. It's a little more of a character. So um, I sort of make fun of singers when I sing as a lampshade, because <laughs> um, it's like all the people that are super self indulgent that kind of drive me crazy. Right. Um, but so getting to sing with Jane is like this very legitimate like like. You either got it or you don't. You either and get we, there or you don't. We've gotten better. I mean, we, oh, we, yeah, were, yeah. we were too shabby when we started out. <laughs> but um, I, my voice is better than it's ever been. No, to yeah. absolutely. There's some, there, absolutely. They, it's true. We could about, do Utah again. You would not need oxygen. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> if fine. we were in Utah today, we would not be sucking that oxygen. Not, <laughs> they literally had a machine where you could go. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. The first, I remember the first time we did the show in New York, and you said, you're as good as me. <laughs> That is high praise, person, baby. you know. Oh, I'm so I was so pleased with us. Well, no, because you don't give it. Away. I mean, you don't. You know, she's not full of shit. She's really, you know. She gets a call. If you get a compliment, it's it's genuine. It's not, you know. She's not emailing. You're it as in. good yeah. as me. How's that for a compliment? <laughs> I knew she would get it though. I know you guys packed the show with a ton of songs, but are there any songs that um, you would like to get into the show that you didn't get in? You're kind of this, you know, well-oiled machine. Is. If we find a song that we want to get in, we will put it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I mean, yeah. we talked about doing some Roaches songs, which we might, you know, well, we could maybe still Christmas, do that. Maybe you know the uh, Roaches. Y'all should check them out. They're three sisters from New Jersey, and they were popular in the '70s. And they do these crazy three-part harmonies, but hilarious lyrics. A lot of and, acapella. A lot of acapella, yeah. and so and um, uh, some of the songs are hilarious, and some of them are very moving. So we will look into yeah, that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, there might be some Christmas material. Perhaps. Oh, oh perhaps we might yeah. do. We might do a very crazy version of the Alleluia Chorus. Oh yeah, yeah. It'll be, cool. it'll be legit, you know, the actual parts and everything, but we'll do it really fast, right? <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No rehearsal. That's probably no gonna pressure. happen in yeah. December. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it would be awkward in March. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. No, well actually, that's when he is risen, oh. according to <laughs> the timeline <laughs> of this whole thing. The Alleluia Chorus is he is risen, and it's we a, do it at Christmas, and it's, it's just the timeline's off as well. Gotta talk to, Mm. The new pope about that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so looking back at your guys' careers, what were just like the most memorable times, the most fun times in your career? I mean, obviously you guys are on TV and it's so, so much success in you know the past couple you know decades here. But funny music is in every memory for me. That's the yeah. best. When we did a mighty wind, rehearsing a, mi a mighty wind, the music because we didn't rehearse the, the acting because there was no rehearsal for Christopher Guest movies, but we rehearsed oh. the music and then we went on tour, and that was a, so much fun. That was a highlight, and you know, this, yeah, what we're doing now, and the real life Brady Bunch was a lot of fun too, but yeah, mostly the it's the it's the those the God, those were the heady days, the real life Brady Bunch. That was so much fun. Yeah, um, that was like such a journey for mm -hmm. for all of us involved. Like we were learning so much, mm -hmm. and there was such a sense of possibility. Jill Soloway was our director, and her sister Faith, and it was like I, I she I, I, there was a sense like she was Jill was totally fearless even yeah, back Jill, then. Yeah, Jill Jill created fearless. transparent. 
and yeah. uh, as the uh, you know executive producer on that. She it was, she was like 27 years old, and she's dealing with these guys in New York, these theater guys in New York, getting us a great deal. We did it at the Village Gate. Yeah, yeah she was fearless. She great negotiator, but but really great creative person. Like she, just mm -hmm. like she had it all, and I, and like in some ways, I'm so surprised it took her 20 years for Transparent to happen because I would have assumed it would have happened 20 years ago. But she it's was no so slouch before that. No, no, no. It's even but it's even sweeter because yeah, yeah this I'm, is her yeah. story. You know, her yeah. her dad really uh, at the age of 70 decided he was a woman, yeah. kind of out of nowhere. No. Yeah, so we, it's interesting. So we've had like some. Uh, uh, well, that's another shared thing that we have like this kind of experience of someone who. It kind of shepherded all of us to mm -hmm. kind of take it to another level and and to realize that we could reach a, a new dream, like a yeah. different, our own kind of dream, like really follow our own personal bliss, which is unusual because usually, you know, when you go to theater school, sometimes there's this kind of regimented thing that is kind of expected and go to New York or do regional theater and, you know, and, and maybe get paid, you know, getting paid shit and then get paid great mm -hmm. for doing what you really love doing is such a rare, it's like, it's the greatest. I mm -hmm. mean... You guys know you work at Google. You must yeah. be paying millions. <laughs> You're Googlers, right? But seriously, there's something so important about about having that piece. Uh, I don't know. I feel so privileged, and it's always worth the wait. If there's, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that's why I didn't mind waiting tables longer because it was everything was worth the wait. I could just, I don't know. I had some sense of faith about it. Mm -hmm. But I think it came from Chicago days. Yeah, I, I do too. Yeah, keep it fun or don't do it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for being here so sure. much. Here so much. <laughs> so, uh, see Jane Singh uh, playing at UC Davis right. uh, tomorrow night, uh, Ocean Beach, October 3rd. Long Beach. Uh, mm -hmm. Long Beach, sorry. Long, Long Beach, Beach October, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Long Beach, October 3rd, and then uh, New York. At yeah, Joe's, Joe's Pub, Pub is coming up. August. It's, it's, 17, it's, 18, 18, it's the dead days of August in, in New York, and it would be really nice to get some people in the theater. That's true. Jane Absolutely. Lynch Official, or Twitter, or, or Instagram. She's on Joe's Pub. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Thank